In this lesson, we will study the graphs of the secant and cosecant functions. Okay, we're going to start with the secant function. I already chose some x values to plug in. Now, um, I'm starting with negative pi over 2, going all the way to positive pi over 2 and beyond to 3 pi over 2. Um, just one thing to keep in mind, that the secant function, you'll remember that it is undefined at any odd multiple of pi over 2. So right here, this is an odd multiple of pi over 2, so it's going to be undefined here, which means there will be a vertical asymptote here. Pi over 2 is an odd multiple of pi over 2, so there will be another vertical asymptote here. It will be undefined. And again, at 3 pi over 2, undefined, a vertical asymptote there as well. All right, so I went ahead and evaluated my secant function at each one of these input values here. And now I'm ready to plot. Now, notice I put my vertical asymptotes at negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, okay, because this is where secant is undefined at odd multiples of pi over 2. Now, you should see that the function goes right through 0, 1. So it goes through 0, 1 right here. And um, at negative pi over 4, which is right here, negative pi over 4, you're at root 2. So you root 2 is more than 1. So at negative pi over 4, you're up here. At positive pi over 4, which is right here, you're also up here. In other words, this branch here is going upwards on both ends. And we know that uh, the graphs of functions get infinitely close to vertical asymptotes. And so it has no choice but to be going up like that. Now, because that's the nature of the branch there, there cannot be another branch down here that would fail the vertical line test. So for this... Uh, branch, this is all we have, all right? Now, over here, between these two vertical asymptotes, uh, please notice that at pi, you're at negative 1. Pi, you're at negative 1. That's what this is, folks. This is pi. Uh, right between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 is pi. You're at negative 1. Now, at 3 pi over 4, which is here, 3 pi over 4, I'm sorry, 3 pi over 4 is here, excuse me. You're at negative root 2, so you are down here at 3 pi over 4, negative root 2. And um, let's see, at, oh, that would mean that this is going downward like this and the same on this side, okay? So this is the graph of the secant function. It, it includes or covers two different branches. You have an upward opening branch, you have a downward opening branch. The same is going to be true for cosecant. Of course, things will be a little different, but um, you're going to have an upward opening branch and a downward opening branch. For secant, please remember that this opening branch here is between the two vertical asymptotes, negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, and this downward opening branch is between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Matter of fact, let's write some observations. Some uh, Let's make a list of, I guess, the properties or characteristics of the graph of the secant function. All right, you should remember that the domain for the secant function is, well, I'll write it in set builder notation, the set of all x such that x is not an odd multiple of pi over 2. And of course, that's how we write that in set builder notation. You know what I forgot, though? Um, you know what? <laughs> um, let me see if I can squeeze this a little bit in here. I forgot to close the brace. See if I can fit that in. Okay, got it. So um, the set of all x such that x is not an odd multiple of pi over 2. That's the domain. Now, the range, you'll remember that the range is anything less than or equal to negative 1 union anything greater than or equal to positive one and you can look at the picture to confirm all of this as well now this function is dis discontinuous at x values that are equal to any odd multiple of pi over two all right so at any x value um that is an odd multiple of pi over 2, the function is discontinuous at these locations. In other words, your vertical asymptotes 
have equations that are of this form, right? All of your vertical asymptotes are at the odd multiples of pi over 2. Notice that the graph never touches the x-axis, so there, there are no x-intercepts. Notice that the period is 2 pi. How do we know that? Well, look at you get one complete upward opening branch and one complete uh, downward opening branch from negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. And that distance here from negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 is 2 pi. There is no maximum, there is no minimum, because these graphs go infinitely um, high and infinitely low. Um, this graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Let me, uh, I forgot the x here. Okay, so it's there, um, the graph is being mirrored across the y-axis. And you can see that clearly with this branch here, um, here, this part of the branch is mirrored across the y-axis over here, okay? So that means it's an even function, which of course means that secant of negative x is equal to secant of x. That is to say, if you negate your input, you get the same output, okay? It doesn't change your output. Now, um, you're going to want to remember that um, secant is an even function just like its reciprocal, cosine. The reciprocal of secant is cosine, and cosine happens to be even as well. So cosine is even, and its reciprocal, the secant function, is also even. All right, let's get the cosecant um, function up here and its graph. You'll remember that the cosecant function is undefined at any multiple, any multiple of pi. So therefore, um, here it will be undefined. Um, here it'll be undefined, and here it'll be undefined. In other words, those are the locations of the vertical asymptotes. All right, we went ahead and evaluated the cosecant function at some um, input values, and now we're ready to graph. All right, you'll see that I um, drew my vertical asymptotes at every multiple of pi. Now, let's go ahead and plot this point. Um, at pi over 2, you're at 1. This is pi over 2, so you're up here at 1. Let's draw that. And at pi over 6, which is over here, at pi over 6, you're up at 2, so you're up here, which leads us to believe that the branch here is opening upward. All right, that's super helpful. Now, at 3 pi over 2, which is well over here, you are down at negative 1. And you're probably going to uh, expect for this piece here, this branch, to be opening downward, and you'd be right. That is correct. So here you have, from 0 to 2 pi, you have one complete upward opening branch and one downward opening branch. All right, you'll recall that the domain for the cosecant function is the set of all x such that x is not a multiple of pi, all right? You'll recall also that the range is the same as the range for secant. It's anything less than or equal to negative 1 union, anything greater than or equal to positive 1, okay? And that's supposed to be a comma right there, okay? Discontinuous at x values that are of the form n pi. So this function is discontinuous in any multiple of pi. That means there are vertical asymptotes located at every multiple of pi. Just like secant, its cofunction, there are no x-intercepts. And just like secant, notice that the period is 2 pi. From 0 to 2 pi, you have one complete upward branch and one complete downward opening branch. So the period is 2 pi. Please notice at this point that the period for sine, cosine, secant and cosecant are all 2 pi. The period for tangent and cotangent is pi. Again, there is no maximum or minimum because these branches are rising increase, uh, increasingly and indefinitely and also decreasing indefinitely. This function is symmetric with respect to the origin, which means it's an odd function. So cosecant of negative x 
is equal to negative cosecant of x. If you negate the input, you'll negate the output. All right, the first graph that we are, we are going to graph is y is equal to 2 times secant of 1 half x. Now, to get us started here, what we're going to do is use its reciprocal function as a guide. So because this is the secant function, its reciprocal is cosine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on graphing y equal to 2 times cosine of 1 half x. I'm going to have that to graph, and then I will use it as a guide to get the final answer of secant. All right? All right, let's go. All right, the first thing that we will do in order to graph cosine, okay, is find its period. Now, the period is going to be equal to 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over 1 half, right? The coefficient of x, which just turns out to be 4 pi. Because there is no uh, horizontal um, uh, shifting, no phase shift, um, I know that the interval over which it completes this period is 0 to 4 pi. Okay, I know it's 0 to 4 pi. Um, notice that there has been a horizontal stretching due to this 1 half here. Because the interval used to be 0 to 2 pi, now it's 0 to 4 pi. It got horizontally stretched. But there's no phase shift, so I know it still starts at 0. But instead of the end point, the right end point being 2 pi, it's 4 pi. We're going to take this interval and find our midpoint and our quarter points. All right, I found the midpoint uh, to be 2 pi and the first quarter point to be 1 pi and the third quarter point to be 3 pi. We're going to go ahead and plug in these values into the cosine function. All right, I went ahead and plugged in my um, input values and got these output values. So I'm going to go ahead and graph um, what I have so far, okay? Now keep in mind this graph that we're drawing now is not our final answer, okay? It's not our final answer at all. It is just our guide, right? We're using the cosine function as a guide, okay? All right. So we have the following uh, points here, uh, 0, 2, 0, 2, we have pi 0, 2 pi negative 2, we have 3 pi 0, and 4 pi 2. Now, um, because this is just a guide, I'm going to use a dashed line, okay, everybody? Because I don't want to confuse myself or anyone else that is reading my graph, that this is just um, a guide. Now, we, you and I are graphing the secant function. Now remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So watch this. Wherever cosine is zero, then secant is undefined, right? Because they're reciprocals. So wherever cosine is zero, secant will, unbe will be undefined. So wherever cosine is zero, wherever it touches the x-axis, there's a vertical asymptote right there for the secant function. So there's a vertical asymptote here, and there's a vertical asymptote here for the secant function, because those are the two points at which the cosine function hits the x-axis. These are the locations where the cosine function is zero here, meaning secant's undefined. So now all we have to do to get the final graph is draw this half of a branch this way like that. It has to get infinitely close to your asymptote, right? Um, and then over here in between, it has to be going down, right? Like this. And over here, it have to be going up like that. So what you see here are um, in purple uh, is the graph of the secant function. Now, this is one complete period. Uh, we have one complete downward opening branch. And if you piece these together, if you consider both of these, then you have one complete upward opening branch. They're just not connected, but they still count as, you know, the right hand side of the opening branch and the left hand side of the opening branch. So this is one period. The next example says graph y equal to 3 halves cosecant of x minus pi over 2. 
Now, because this is a cosecant function, its reciprocal will be uh, sine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sine function as a guide. So we're using, or we're graphing at the moment, y equal to 3 halves sine of x minus pi over 2. And then we'll just reciprocate that and get the graph of cosecant. Notice in this function, um, the period is just 2 pi. And that's because there is no horizontal stretching, no horizontal shrinking. The b value is just 1. Um, in order to find the interval over which it completes one period, however, I'm going to have to take the entire argument and make this three-part inequality because there's been a phase shift. So I'm adding pi over 2 to 0. I'm adding pi over 2 to 2 pi, right, which will give me 5 pi over 2. Don't forget that 2 pi is 4 pi over 2. So when you add 1 pi over 2 to 4 pi over 2, you get 5 pi over 2. So the interval over which it completes one period is pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. This is the interval that we will be splitting into, um, into four equal parts to find the midpoint and the quarter points. All right, um, following the same strategy from earlier lessons, I found the midpoint to be 3 pi over 2, first quarter point to be pi, and the third quarter point to be 2 pi. I'm now ready to plug these values in to the sine function. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plug in pi over 2. Uh, but pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is just 0. And sine of 0 is 0. 3 halves times 0 is 0. I'm going to plug in pi now. Uh, pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2. And sine of pi over 2 is 1. 3 halves times 1 is 3 halves. 3 pi over 2 is next. 3 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. Sine of pi is 0. 3 halves times 0 is 0. 2 pi. Um, no, notice the pattern. X-intercept, maximum, X-intercept. We expect to get a minimum here of negative 3 halves. Let's go ahead and plug in 2 pi. 2 pi minus pi uh, over 2 is 3 pi over 2. And sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. 3 halves times negative 1 is negative 3 halves. I expect to get a 0 next um, to wrap this up. 5 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And sine of 2 pi is 0. 3 halves times 0 is 0. All right, at pi over 2, we are at an x-intercept. At pi, we're up at a um, maximum, so about right there. Uh, 3 halves. And then 3 pi over 2, we're back down at an x-intercept. At 2 pi, we're down at a minimum of negative 3 halves. And at 5 pi over 2, we're back up at an x-intercept. So again, you're going to see me use a dashed line here because this is just a guide. Now, what we're supposed to be graphing is the cosecant function. Now, listen carefully. Wherever sine is 0, cosecant will be undefined because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So when you reciprocate 0, you have something undefined. So whenever sine hits the x-axis, basically, you have a vertical asymptote. Whenever the sine function hits the x-axis, that's where your um, cosecant function is undefined. All right, so we have our vertical asymptotes. Now we're ready to reciprocate the graph. So here, uh, let me get uh, there, this color. All right, so from here, we are going to go upward, right? That would be the reciprocal. And over here, we're going to go downward toward the vertical asymptotes, all right? Um, so this is one complete period for this function, uh, which is the cosecant function, okay? You have a complete upward opening branch and a complete downward opening branch. A lot of fun, isn't it? All right, folks, this is the end of this lesson. I know it was relatively short, but I think it was kind of short because we're using the graphs of sine and cosine to get the graphs of cosecant and secant. So as long as you're comfortable with sine and cosine, which we already studied in, um, in an earlier lesson, then you should be fine finding secant and cosecant, all right?